Now, what products will we get if we mix toluene with nitric acid and sulfuric acid? So here's toluene. It's basically a benzene ring with a methyl group. And so in this reaction, this is going to be the nitration of toluene. So what products can we get in this reaction? Now, the methyl group is a weakly activating group. It's also an ortho para director. So it's going to direct the incoming NO2 group either to the ortho position or to the para position. And so what we're going to get is a mixture of products. And so we can get the ortho product. And we can also get the para product. So which of these two products will be the major product? Is it going to be the ortho product or the para product? What would you say? Well, it turns out that you get a good mixture of both products, but it's not an equal 50-50 uh, mixture. Rather, the ortho product will exceed the para product in this example. And the ratio is about 60% of the ortho product and 40% of the para product. So the methyl group, because it's not bulky, it's going to favor the ortho product over the para product. But you still get a good mix of both. Now, what's going to happen if we replace the methyl group with a bulkier, let's say, ethyl group? How will that affect the ortho para ratio? for the nitration of ethyl benzene. So we're still going to get a good mixture of both products. Just like before, we're going to get the ortho product. And we're also going to get the para product. So which of these two products do you think will be the major product? Is it ortho, para, or do you think they will be the same in this example? It turns out that for this reaction, there is no major or minor product. The ortho and the para product, they exist in about the same yield, 50-50. And so for ethyl benzene, we get a good mixture of both. So notice what happened when we replaced the methyl group with an ethyl group. So by replacing the methyl group with a more bulkier or a group that's more sterically hindered, the ortho product, its yield went down and the yield of the para product went up. And so keep that in mind. If you use a very bulky substituent, then the para product will be favored. But if you use a, a substituent that is not bulky like the methyl group, then you're going to get a good yield for the ortho product as well. So the next example will illustrate this. So this time, we're going to use a bulky tert butyl group. And we're going to react it with nitric acid and sulfuric acid. And so in this case, it's very clear to see which product will be the major product. What do you think the numbers will be for this reaction? So we know it's not going to be a 50-50 ratio anymore. What do you think the yields would be in this example? So this is the ortho product, and here is the para product. So without knowing the numbers, you know that the para product will be the major product because this site is more accessible, whereas this site is too sterically hindered. And so the yield for the ortho site will be low. So the ortho product is going to be the minor product in this example. And according to one textbook, the ortho ratio in this example is roughly about 20%, and the para ratio is 80%. So when using bulky groups, the para product will be the major product. And if you use 
a group that's not bulky, like a methyl group, then the ortho product will be slightly above the para product, but you still get a good mixture of both. Now let's go over some example problems. So for these problems, I want you to draw all the possible products that can form in this reaction and identify which one is the major product and which one is the minor product. So here we have a benzene ring with a tert butyl group and a methyl group. So where will the NO2 go? Now, the methyl group wants the NO2 group to go ortho or para with respect to it. So these two positions are ortho with respect to the methyl group. And this is para, but para is occupied by the tert butyl group, so it won't go there. Now, the left side and the right side would lead to the same product, so we're not going to worry about the left side. We're just going to focus on the right side. So the methyl group wants the NO2 group to go there. Now, the tert butyl group is also an alkyl group, so it's an ortho para director. So the tert butyl group wants the NO2 group to go here, but it can't go there. And so these two, they compete with each other, and they're both weakly activating groups. So the NO2 can go in both of those two positions. And so we're going to get a mixture of products. So here's the first product where the NO2 group is very close to the tert butyl group. And then for the second product, let's put it over here. We're going to put the NO2 group ortho with respect to the methyl group. So these are the two products that we can get in this reaction. Now, which one is going to be the major product and which one is going to be the minor product? Well, this carbon highlighted in red is more accessible because the methyl group is less sterically hindered than the terbutyl group. So therefore, this is going to be the major product. And this is going to be the minor product. We can still get it, however, not in good yield because this terbutyl group is very bulky. We have a carbon with three methyl groups on that carbon. And so it's very difficult for the nitronium ion to approach at this position. So this is going to be the major product due to steric effects. Now let's consider one more example. So this time, the terbutyl group and the methyl group will be ortho with respect to each other, compared to the last example where they were para with respect to each other. And so let's react it with nitric acid and sulfuric acid again. So let's focus on the methyl group using the same color red. Now the methyl group, which is right here, it wants to direct the incoming NO2 group to the ortho position. So it could be on either side because those two sides will lead to a different product or the para position with respect to the methyl group. Now, the tert butyl group also wants the NO2 group to go in the same position, ortho with respect to it, or para. So in this case, the methyl group and the tert butyl group, they're working with each other rather than against each other. So now, the only thing we need to consider is steric effects. Now, let's call this site A, and this is going to be site B and C. Which of these three sites is most accessible to the incoming NO2 group or the nitronium ion? C is the least accessible because it's between a bulky terbutyl group and a methyl group. Now, A is the most accessible because it's very far away from the terbutyl group. B is close to the terbutyl group, but it's not between the terbutyl group and the methyl group. So B is better than C. Therefore, A is the most accessible carbon to the electrophile, B is in the middle, and C is the worst. So the major product will be this one, where we place the NO2 group at position A, because that is the most accessible carbon. And then B is going to give us the minor product, which 
Let me put this here. Now, as for product C, because it's so sterically hindered, this product will be negligible. If it does form, the yield will be very, very low. So we don't need to write it. So therefore, product A is the major product. Product B is the minor product. So these two products, they will be significant in the reaction. But product C will be insignificant. So it's not going to be observed. And so that's it for this video. Hopefully it gave you a good understanding of the orthopair ratio and how to tell which product will be the major product looking at steric effects. Thanks for watching.